one of our big goals for Heroes of Stalingrad is to make the most realistic weapon functionality and handling in any first person shooter. So if you're familiar with the first Red Orchestra, you know that we have a, this system called Free Aim. There's no crosshair and the, the weapon is able to be moved around independent of the player's camera. And then the bullets will go exactly where the barrel of the gun is pointed, not the center of the screen. This allows you to have a, a, realistic, a realistic challenge while shooting at people uh, without aiming. What we've done for the new game is extended this system to work with the, in the aiming mode. So you can see the weapon moves slightly independent of the camera. And this is really good if you're trying to uh, scope out enemies at a certain area. You can actually move the gun down out of your view a little bit and then back up to take your shot without losing sight of the target. One of our big goals for Heroes of Stalingrad is to make the most realistic weapon functionality and handling in any first person shooter. Uh, the player can lock onto cover objects throughout the world. They can move along the cover without exposing themselves. You know, pick out the side, pick out the top, and even uh, blind fire over the top and out the side of the cover. This is particularly handy uh, if you're clearing rooms as you uh, come up to the corner of a wall or, or a door. Not very accurate, but uh, certainly effective uh, if there's a room full of enemies. Uh, Heroes of Stalingrad, uh, like the original game, features a, a full, oops, features a full ballistic system uh, that simulates a bullet drop and travel time for the rounds. One of the things that wasn't in the first game, though, that's uh, been very highly requested is a bullet penetration system, and uh, which I'm happy to say we, we have in the new game, as you can see, shooting through uh, thinner objects. Another feature that we've added uh, to Heroes of Stalingrad um, in the original Red Orchestra, we had the, a sway system when you went into aiming mode. Sort of moved your gun around like this. Really wasn't accurate to what a real life weapon would do in a person's hands. Now we're modeling a, a full breathing model. This enemy here. As you can see, as the player breathes in and out, the weapon will move up and down. Stop shooting me. The weapon will move up and down and shake a little bit, just like it would in a real person's hand. But what we've also done is added a system that we call controlled breathing. With controlled breathing, reload here real quick, you can actually, the player uh, can actually hold, hold their breath for a moment, pause, and then they will breathe slowly and pause between each breath. This is really good for uh, long range combat as if you fire when the breath is paused, you'll get the most accurate shot. Another thing that we've uh, added to the game is, uh, you've probably seen this in a lot of other games, you walk up to a wall, the first person weapon comes down. We've taken this type of thing quite a bit further and added what we call first person weapon collision. So when you're aiming, if your weapon touches a wall, it actually physically interacts with the wall. The wall will push back and uh, this really gives you the feeling that you're using a weapon in the first person world as opposed to uh, just having something bolted to your screen. It really enhances not only the uh, gameplay but the immersion uh, that you have a real object in your hands. And one thing you'll notice if you look at the screen, there's not a whole lot of icons that are on the screen all the time. The goal, the goal here for us, let's see if I can get one of these guys with blind fire. Yeah. The goal for us with this is to have as little amount of stuff on the screen at all times as possible. This really, uh, we feel, makes the game a lot more immersive. But one of the things, one of the issues that we had in the first game was we had an overhead map that showed you just like this, that shows you where you're at and where your objectives are. But this kind of fell apart if you were in any kind of scenario where, uh, where there was multiple levels in a building such as this. Um, so what we've added is what we call our tactical view. The tactical view, when you press the key, will bring up icons showing you exactly where the objectives are and uh, the status of them. As you can see, both of these objectives are under attack. Um, several games have, uh, have you know, world HUD indicators that show where you need to go but they're in your face all the time and kind of be distracting. You know, if, if I was trying to shoot at a guy here and there's a giant cross in my way, it would be a little distracting. This, this also brings up information about your character which will fade away when you don't want it. We call the system HUD on demand. And this uh, really gives you the information when you want it and, and need it, but not when you don't want it. 